Dear colleagues and guests, good afternoon. Uh, the topic of my lecture is repair of tetralogy of fallow. Tetralogy of fallow classically understood to involve four, four anatomical abnormalities of the heart, which at the same time could present in a wide range, such as from the right ventricular outlook tract abstraction to a pulmonary atresia. TOF also can be classified into subtypes, most common one which pulmonary stenosis, other are TOF which absent pulmonary valve, TOF common atrioventricular canal and with pulmonary atresia. Without the surgery, about 35 persons die in the first year and by the 40 years almost no one survives. In contrast, we know that excellent survival rate has been reported for these patients having complete repair. The 20 year survival rate reaches up to 95%. Expectation from surgery are to minimize early mortality and morbidity, to avoid long-term complication, to achieve good functional status and good quality of life, and to uh, provide good relief of reward, preserve pulmonary and tricuspid valve functions, and preserve good biventricular contractility. However, there are some questions, such as what would be the optimal time of repair? Should it be one stage or two stages? Or what approach should be utilized to complete the repair? This issue we will try to illustrate in following slides. Regarding the timing, the studies have shown that the outcomes are very good if the repair will be done as early as in the first year. Here you can see that the hospital mortality varies from zero to six percent. From this curve, we can see also two different phases that are distinct. The early low risk phase lasts about 25 years, after which the risk increasing significantly in long term survival. Another aspect of timing is that should we perform complete repair right in the neonatal period? Several advantages have been listed of neonatal repair, such as prevention and deleterious effect of cyanosis removal of st stimulus of RV hypertrophy, improving lung development, prevention of shunt-induced complications, and psychosocial economical issues. However, neonatal repair carries some disadvantage, such as poor neurodevelopmental outcomes of neonates and the higher probability of employment of the ventricular approach with wider transannular patch. Both patients can be operated as one stage or two stages. Over the time, the surgical treatment of TOF has evolved from the repair via the right ventricle tomy with the patch in the reward and often after initial palliative shunting to transatrial transpulmonary approach often as primary repair. Indication for palliative repair often are the presence of anomalous coronaries multiple VSDs, generalized critical illness, prematurity, and low birth weight. <laughs> Sternotomy is preferable to the thoracotomy in terms of better addressing other coexisting anomalies or technical convenience. Regarding the choice of pulmonary artery branch, the largest in diameter should be considered. If the diameter of the pulmonary artery is similar, then the opposite side of the aortic arch should be considered. The graph size depends on the size of pulmonary artery, patient's weight, pathology, or surgeon's experience, of course. In our center, we are used the graft, which has about 80% of the artery size. There are some valuable pulmonary artery measuring parameters, such as Macon index, Nakata index, total neopulmonary artery index. However, recently, the value of all of these has been questioned. 
because these indices consider only of size of port proximal vessels and not consider the condition of distal part of the vessels, which may be stenosis. Commonly, there are three operative approach can be used for the complete repair. There are, these are the transatrial, transventricular, and transpulmonary approach. The proven advantage of transatrial approach include the long-term preservation of the right ventricle, minimization of the risk of injuring the coronary arteries, and less several results, resulting pulmonary regurgitation after limited transannular patching. The transpulmonary approach is performing the longitudinal incision in the main pulmonary artery and extended to the annulus of the pulmonary valve. In transatrial transpulmonary approach, the right ventricular incision is limited to what is required to relieve to reward, which VSD closure and reward resection performed via the tricuspid and pulmonary valve. Here are the list of risk factors which increase the early mortality after the repair of tetralogy fallo. These include our age and the weight of the patients, presence of coronary anomaly, anatomy of pulmonary tree, hypoplasia of left ventricle, other coexisting cardiac anomalies, and so on. The early complication include residual lesion, which often are indication for early intervention. Other include tricuspid regurgitation, progressive LV dysfunction, and especially I want to emphasize to, on pulmonary regurgitation, which is the predominant hemodynamic abnormality throughout the early and late periods, eventually causing right ventricular failure and arrhythmias. Statistically, with 30 years, about 50% of patients who survive a tough repair will have reoperation. Pulmonary valve replacement and cardio defibrillator replacement are the common long-term procedures in the case. Now let's take uh, a talk at the surgical principle and techniques. The ideal balance between the pulmonary insufficiency and pulmonary stenosis still remain controversial. Particularly, which is the worst for the right ventricle and left ventricle over the long term? Isolate pulmonary insufficiency or combined pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary insufficiency? Should we limit pulmonary insufficiency but accepting more pulmonary stenosis as the, as the initial repair, and how to eliminate both problems using appropriate techniques. This became especially actual when dealing with the patients with small pulmonary valve annulus. Different strategies have been used in robot reconstruction with small pulmonary valve annulus. Each has merits and demerits, it can be a transannular patch which relieves the right ventricular pressure but creates the state of chronic pulmonary insufficiency. Otherwise, it can be insertion of the valve conduit. A valve conduit results in a, in a reliable, fully competent pulmonary valve but subject in pro to progressive stenosis. The third option can be a monocast construction. Many centers have reported good short-term results with it However, the long-term function of the monocast has been questioned. Toati have reported that the younger than patients, the higher of incidence of transannular patients at the time of uh, complete repair. Moreover, a report reviewing 56 patients which took less than six months of age showed a significantly lower incidence of TAP in the patients who were initially palliated, which are shunned, compared with patients who underwent, underwent initial complete repair. Overall studies summarize that the use of TAP is a predictor of poor and uh, event-free outcomes. It almost doubles of risk of the composite endpoint of death, reoperation, balloon dilatation, pacemaker replacement, or pulmonary valve regurgitation. The second technique for what reconstruction is uh, creating the monocusp. 
The leaflet material for monocast can be either the otolox or bovine pericardium, homograph, valve cast, or the PTFA pericardial membrane. Here you can see one of the most used techniques for monocast reconstruction. After the sizing of pulmonary annulus, the appropriate size of PTFA patch is cut and place it in the pulmonary annulus, which is roofed with transannular patch. In the 12 year experience with the PTFA monocast reconstruction, John and colleagues reported that the use of PTFA monocast valve prevents early and significantly reduced midterm pulmonary insufficiency. Also, it is inexpensive and easy to construct. Here are the techniques of valve saving procedures. Here you can see Otolox pantalon precardial patch techniques. Here is the V plus D techniques, which was described by Hashim Stunsoy. Also, during the repair, the follow, we have the deal with the presence of our pulmonary collaterals. They are arising most commonly from the descending aorta, amount can vary, and with a diameter of about 1 to 20 millimeters. MAPCA can be either surgically ligated or embolized. These must be considered before CPB, and the second option can be an onocrugalization. Patch enlargement techniques must be performed in accordance to the anatomy of the pulmonary arch in each individual case. Here is a reconstruction of the pulmonary artery branches with the left pulmonary artery stenosis. In most of the case, the single transannular patch enlargement extending into the LPA insufficiency to repair stenosis of the origin of the LPA when it has the same access in the main pulmonary artery. If we encounter which isolates stenosis at origin of LPA, then incision can be made across of the stenosis and patch of pericardium is soon into place. The RPA is usually not an extension of the pulmonary trunk, but comes off its side at a right angle, requiring a more complex repair. Sometimes the end of the transected ascending aorta retracted to exposure of proximal RPA, complete reconstruction of proximal RPA, and after that you can see the aortic anastomosis. Here is a repair of pulmonary trunk and bifurcation stenosis. During the complete repair, we might use uh, valve conduits. When we search for the ideal conduits, we want it to not calcify or deteriorate, resist infection, be available in a wide range of size, not require anticoagulation, provide for somatic growth. Several material has been used here, such as the Corodex, Homographs, Contegra, Hanko conduits. The use of bovine, bovine jugular vein grafts containing a leaflet venous valve has gained popularity since beginning in, of 2000. It's available in a weight range of size, has larger effective orifice area, low calcification rate, has good handling characteristics, lower price than allografts and other technical advantage. Short, good short-term and mid-term results has been reported in favor of Contegra. From the seven-year European Contegra multicenter study was concluded that the performance of the Contegra conduits compare well with such a homograph when used to reconstruct pediatric right ventricular outflow tract. Experience with 7 to 1 Contegra implantation for what reconstruction showed that Contegra offers many advantages compared to homographs and forcing xenographs. Also, implantation is safer and far easier for the surgeon. In the survival with different kinds of conduits, we can see better survival rate with the Contegra. During the 
27 months follow-up, Contegra conduit function was at least as good as it was for homographs and was far superior to porcine xenographs. Study uh, comparing Contegra with pulmonary homographs in children less than two years of age, I reported the structure, uh, structural integrity and conduit performance of the Contegra was superior to pulmonary homographs in patients less than two years age, following up four to five years. Actual survival was similar, but freedom from conduit dysfunction and failure and conduit exp uh, explantation in is significantly better with Contegra. Another study, long-term results with homographs and xenographs for right ventricular outflow of tract construction. The study from Switzerland reporting that long-term results concluded that non-blood group compatible homographs have a significantly higher early reoperation rate than blood group compatible homographs. Contegra graphs have a very low early reoperation rate and could therefore be used in neonates if the blood, blood group compatible homographs cannot be found. <coughs> Here are the results of other single institution confirming the good results with respect to survival and freedom from Contegra conduit failure. However, there are, uh, there are some disadvantages of Contegra has been reported. The study from Belgium showed that the homographs had better outcomes when compared with the, that one receiving the Contegra. And the higher incidence of the Contegra failure was most related to the stenosis of the distal anastomosis. The Hancock porcine valve dacron conduits also have been used for root reconstruction in top patients. Belly at all following more than 200 survivals for medium period up of 98 months, where they concluded that Hancock conduits appeared to be an adapted device in the presence of increasing pulmonary vascular resistance or surgically inaccessible distal branch stenosis. They recommended its use particularly beyond neonatal periods and in the presence of increasing pulmonary vascular resistance. Allow me in briefly to say a few words about the tough experience in our center. During the 10 years period, 335 patients with TOF have been operated in our hospital. 241 of them underwent the primary complete repair. 94 patients received palliative shunts, 44 of which had subsequent complete repair. Age range was from one to 40 years old. The proportion of serenotomy to thoracotomy of palliative operation was almost equal. Here is a figure showing primary versus shunting patients. I would like to show the short video film. The pulmonary trunk was opening. Here is the infundibulotomy. The left pulmonary cusp is separated from the annulus. Here we perform the infundibular myectomy and checking to release of robot. The patient was diagnosed with tetralogy of fallo with normal pulmonary artery branches and small pulmonary annulus. VSD was closed towards the right atriotomy and tricuspid valve. Putting the suspending stitch from the left and right side of annulus.
after that freeing their valve cars. Our aim was to preserve the native pulmonary leaflets or to reconstruct one functional leaflet from the existing native leaflets. After the construction of one leaflet, stitching the posterior cuts to the wall of the pulmonary artery, cutting the otolox pericardium, An appropriate size of Hagar is inserted through the pulmonary artery and new pulmonary cusp is created. And distal part of the valve is swing to the incision edge of the right ventricle. We believe that this valve preservation uh, they preserve the native pulmonary leaflets together with, with monocast reconstruction techniques is more predictive for the right ventricular function in early and midterm periods. Also, if valve implantation will be required in the long period, we can easily perform interventional or beating heart surgical valve reimplantation. Here you can see the new pulmonary valve orifice. We check it again with the Hagar dilatator. Here is a stitch of the mid part of the valve. And uh, we are checking again. And finally, now we are putting the stitch of the mid part. The finally, the transannular bovine pericardial patch covering the valve is soon. Postoperative data in 209 patients, the VSD was closed through the right atrium, whereas in 76 through the incision of right ventricle. In 94 cases of pulmonary annulus and valve were intact. In 191 patients, pulmonary annulus were incised. Patch covering the bifurcation of pulmonary artery was the 38 patients. CPB time about the 50 minutes and cross clamp time about the 40 minutes. Overall in hospital mortality was the 4.2%. Postoperative complication constituted revision for bleeding in six patients, residual VSD requiring reintervention in eight patients, delayed closure of sternum in nine patients, residual pulmonary stenosis, 17 patients, the 40 persons we treat interventional uh, stenting. Uh, to pulmonary artery, 
Permanent pacemaker implantation in six patients, aortic valve repair, one patient was adults. LED injury occurring one patient, which was successfully repaired. Our specific protocol of our center were that we had the higher proportion of adults patients aged over 10 years old, about the 30 percent. In the early stage closure of VSD was done mainly through the infundibulotomy. Later, our preferable choice was closure VSD was through the right atriotomy. We like to keep RVPA gradients of 30-40 and pressure ratio of RV and LV below than 0.6. If both gradient and pressure ratio are higher than these values, fenestration or remiectomy will be considered in operating time. For the patient, especially adult patients, who is the hematocrit uh, over 55, we perform exfusion one week before, then we transfuse aether saline or plasma if INR, INR is elevated, especially for the adult patients. Here's the protocol for the timing of repair for the patients which talk, which we use in our hospital. For doctors depending or symptomatic non-doctors depending patients, we perform neonatal palliative repair after which they can have total correction. Symptomatic non-doctors depending patients are receiving the shunt as a first choice. Asymptomatic non-doctors depending patients normally undergo operation by the age of the over six months. In conclusion, the patient with cyanotic TOF with ATER undergo neonatal complete repair of neonatal palliation. Perioperative mortality rate of ATER surgical approach is similar. In symptomatic young infants, a palliative shunt would be considered and performed initially to avoid neurological complication to reduce the morbidity and to reduce the risk of transannular patch. If neonatal tetralogy surgery can be safely delayed, then non-neonatal primary elective repair is preferable to a staged procedure. According to our experience, closing the VSD in older patients through the infundibulotomy is feasible and safe to avoid potential risk of injury of the tricuspid valve. Such as wide spectrum of the patanotomy of the TOF, surgical management remains depending on the protocols preferred by the individual centers. At last, among the factors affecting the early postoperative mortality is not only the right timing and the surgical techniques, but also depending uh, on the postoperative ICU management. Although we don't have might mid and long term results yet. Our modification of cusp construction, it seems to be an option for the patient with a very small pulmonary valve. At last, the right solution of hypoplastic pulmonary valve should be looked in pulmonary valve itself. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. And finally, I warmly want to invite uh, you to Formula One Grand Prix in Europe, which, which will be held in July in Baku. Uh, hope it will be successful as the Eurovision Song Contest and the European Olympic first game took place in Baku. I sincerely hope you come and enjoy the contest. Thank you very much.